Hello all, Dr. Jared here, coming to you with your first part of the Spring Clean Mini Masterclass. You know, very excited to go through this program with you because, you know, the reality is, is toxicity, especially hidden toxicity, is something that is, quite frankly, plaguing people um, literally more than it ever has before. And I'll explain why in a little bit, why it is more than it ever has been in the history of the world. Now, why that matters for you is it relates to everything from hormone imbalances, um, affecting mood, uh, affecting weight gain, um, causing cancer, you know, all these different things. And a big one right now for, for many, many people is affecting immunity. So, you know, you think about um, how many, how much discussion there is right now on the overall immunity and um, the amount of toxins that you consume or the amount of toxins that you're exposed to really um, significantly affects your overall immunity. So we're going to go through some simple things. We're going to go through a few complex things. We're going to go through some supplement things. We're going to go through some food things to really empower you to be able to take some action steps and make a, a bigger difference in your overall um, and your overall action. So a um, couple things is you might see in the description, I've already listed links to our website and I've listed a website link to a um, non-toxic cleaning recipes. We also have um, a couple of QR codes where you're going to want to pause this and um, use your cell phone to pull up the camera to have links to certain websites where you're going to be able to look at the toxicity ratings for things like your cosmetics or your cleaning products or you know things like that so um, why is this important first of all i mean if you can believe it the average american is exposed to over two million chemicals a day two million toxins a day so our body is built to detox on a regular basis, but it's also unfortunately overloaded. If you remember from, if you're a, a consistent watcher, when we talked about the book, The Paleocardiologist, in that book, he talks about how the average American is exposed to more toxins in two days than someone 100 years ago was exposed to in their entire lifetime. So while God gave you your your liver and your kidneys and some other detox organs, quite frankly, they're overloaded. Um, they're overloaded and there's just certain things that you can do to really help um, either not expose yourself to these toxins or help to get the toxins out of your body so that you can live a better life, more energy and better health. So toxins are found in quite a few areas that we're, and we're gonna cover each and every part of this, but food, water, environment, cosmetics, cleaners, and containers. And what I mean by containers is storage containers. So there are certain things that you might wanna change with what you eat or drink, but also you maybe just wanna look at what you're cooking with or what you're storing it in. Um, this was the simplest thing I could give you is when I was first learning about this, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, um, they talked about you, you know, the the one company was storing organic broccoli in a plastic container that leached plastics into the broccoli. So while it was grown organic, because it was, they recommended it was one of those plastic bags where you, you know, you heated it in the microwave. By the time you actually went to consume it, it had all sorts of chemicals in it. So you paid a premium for something that was very toxic. And that toxic damage um, is very accumulative, uh, meaning that it's going to store up in your body. If you get to the point, it's kind of like the, the water drip in a bucket analogy. So if you went and um, you, know, you had a leak in your ceiling and you put a bucket under to catch the water as if it was just a slow drip, um, over time, if you don't ever empty the bucket, the bucket's still gonna overflow on your floor. Worse yet, if the leak gets worse or there's more chemicals that are let in, that bucket's gonna fill up faster. And so, you know, you really wanna look at what are some things that you can change because yes, there are the, the real serious things like, uh, like causing cancers and causing endocrine disorders and causing hormone imbalances, it can even affect things like fertility or, you know, post-menopause symptoms, like I said, it can affect mood, but it also affects the way you look. Toxicity affects the way your skin looks, it affects um, 
the way your hair is, the brittleness in your nails. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can affect over time. Now, remember when they, you know, when you talk about the most serious things, heart disease and cancer are still the top killers in our country, no matter what the news media um, will have you believe. Last year, top two killers, still heart disease and cancer by far. And, um, you know, while, while everybody has a genetic predisposition, remember the doc, I'm sure this isn't even his original quote, but um, one of my favorite integrative medical doctors, Dr. Mark Hyman, he talks about how um, genetics are the gun, but you put the bullets in. Your lifestyle are the bullets. You have to pull the trigger in 95 to 98% of all cases. So while you might not even ever know what you prevented, making some of these changes can truly prevent diseases. So the, the word or the theme consistently through these two mini masterclasses is going to be the word exit conventional. Uh, exit conventional, choose to live max living. So, you know, when, uh, when I get asked about everything from, you know, injections that is currently a, a very hot topic right now to, you know, why we don't chronically use hand sanitizer at my house or, um, you know, a variety of things, I would just tell you it's going to go back for many people to philosophy. Sure, research is important and, and sure, taking multiple um, opinions is important. But what's your philosophy? Do you believe in the body's ability to heal? Do you believe in living as natural as possible? Are you not a drug person? Because if you're not, then you should do it what it takes to avoid needing to take drugs. You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Exit conventional, live max living. So toxic exposure, you know, you're about to, if you live in the, the greater Rockford area, you're about to be exposed to chemicals um, simply because they're going to get thrown up into the air when they're sprayed all over the place here pretty soon. Um, why is that? Well, um, conventional farming has certainly been infiltrated over, especially over the last 30 years with genetically modified foods, but um, super weeds, you know, and when I say super weeds, so you talk about um, for humans, antibiotic resistant bacteria or superbugs uh, is getting to be more and more prevalent. And whose fault is that? Is a species, it is our fault. You know, Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest, I mean, if you constantly sanitize everything, if you overuse antibiotics, which are used in um, raising animals that are kept in too close of quarters, they're given for people for comfort, like ear infections, which are 90% viral, or sinus infections, or many non-life-threatening things. Over time, bacteria can turn into superbugs and create things that are much harder to kill, which require much stronger drugs, and over time, those drugs are not even going to be enough, and they're going to create stronger bacteria. The same thing happens with plants. There will be more pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides sprayed on crops in the Midwest than ever before because year after year, by, by not cycling, by, using, uh, by being very conventional in the farming system, year after year, it takes more chemicals to kill the weeds. And those things store in the food, they store in the plant, they store um, in many parts. They might not kill it, but those chemicals go into your food and you eat that food, which is causing us to need to be more and more of a pull towards organic. It's not like I personally want to eat everything organic, but if you're talking about chemicals and exposure to toxins, non-organic food year after year has more chemicals in it. And so, you know, it's, I heard somebody actually, I was playing basketball. It was, I'm supposed to be playing basketball right now as we record this, but um, as we, you know, one of my friends said, I'm still not sure about that organic thing. And it's like, here's the deal. It's, it, you may be able to debate whether with your budget or certain things that you're going to buy everything organic, but it's non-debatable whether organic is better for your health. It just isn't. It's better for your health to eat organic. And the higher up the food chain, the more important it is 
to eat organic. And what, what I mean by that is, is that um, you're, it's better to eat organic grass fed meat, organic free range chicken, organic, you know, of that, that um, dairy, things that are animal products. It's up to 10 times more important than eating, let's say organic broccoli or organic spinach or something like that. Because as we'll talk about a little later, you are what your animal eats. So one of the spots that we wanna talk about in the household here are household cleaners. So this is where in just a moment, I'm gonna show that QR code, but cleaners there are a couple fold. First of all, when they're on the surface and you touch the surface, about 25% of that absorbs into your skin. Additionally, if you're cleaning with it and you breathe it in, it goes into your mucous membranes and your nose or in your mouth. So what chemicals you use to clean with makes a big deal. Like I mentioned, I posted um, on each of these pages that you might be watching it on, I posted a link where you can have recipes for healthy cleaners and also, if you want to make this, I'm going to make this big, but if you want to take a picture of this or put your camera over this, you can look up what your cleaners are, what they're doing. Check them out. Check out your cleaners or your disinfectants there. So um, now I say disinfectants. Uh, this is, I, I think it's very misunderstood the use of disinfectants and how it affects your body and specifically how it affects your immune system. Now, this, the, the cheap stuff that so many people are buying at Walmart and Walgreens and wherever, um, they have things that are very bad for you besides the fact that the disinfectant is not good for you long term. Fragrances, colors, uh, very toxic and cancer-causing chemicals like propylene glycol. Um, if you've watched some of my previous videos, and we talk about how um, hand sanitizer does not equally kill all bacteria or viruses. So for instance, um, there are certain bacteria that are deadly that actually, um, when you kill the good bacteria with hand sanitizer, they grow bigger in your gut. Now remember, while if we were in a, an extremely infectious time that over a very short period of time, we were um, exposed to this. So for instance, like uh, a few days or a two week period, it might make sense to, to sanitize everything and to use hand sanitizer frequently. But what does that do over the long term? What does that do if you've been using it um, for, for the last year or years? Well, it kills the good bacteria on your hands, which are meant to be a barrier or a natural protectant to your body. And additionally, any of that that you get into your system, just like the antibiotics in um, non-organic meat and dairy, it kills off the good bacteria in your digestive tract. Well, sure, it causes acid reflux, indigestion, um, things like that. But you know where 80% of your immune system is, is, uh, is in your body? It's in your digestive tract. And what's the big part of that? having the right balance of bacteria. So if you constantly, if you were in a forest and you constantly sprayed the forest with Agent Orange, like they did in Vietnam, that's what the forest gets in balance. Plants, the, the right balance of plants do not grow. That is exactly what's happening for people that are chronically using the all these sanitizers and sprays and all this stuff. It's harming the immune system. One of the best articles I ever read was um, it talked about, it was from a pediatrician in New York City, and it talked about the way to build your child's immune system, take them to the subway and let them roll around on the ground. And, you know, people often get like offended by that, like, oh, it's so dirty and so gross. But what do kids need to do? They need to be exposed to stuff. They need to be exposed to other kids. They need to go outside and eat dirt. They need to, you know actually have an opportunity to build their immune system. This whole idea of um, avoiding everything makes no sense. If you went to the gym and you wanted to have big biceps, you have to do bicep curls. You can't stand there on the treadmill and say, I want big biceps. You can't sit at home and say, I don't want to go to the gym because I don't want to get exposed. If you want 
you want muscles, you got to work the muscles. If you want an immune system, you have to work your immune system. You have to be exposed to stuff. It's that simple. And putting stuff like disinfectants, sanitizers, cleaners all over everything harms your body, harms your immune system, and makes you more toxic. It's that simple. Here's just a few of the things that toxic and bioaccumulation and heavy metals can cause over time. People that are linked to um, people that have chronic headaches. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago with coffee. You know, coffee is the second most, um, I think it's the second most shipped commodity in the world besides crude oil. And um, be, to keep it from, to keep your coffee beans because they're roasted looking so clean, um, they're sprayed with all sorts of chemicals. And one of those chemicals is called aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a huge trigger for headaches and migraines and um, endocrine disruptors. And why do they do it? So that mold doesn't grow on the coffee. Now, I don't want mold on my coffee either, but I also don't want a toxin that can cause cancer and all these other things. Now, if we move on just a little bit, this now this is more for women, but cosmetics. Cosmetics are linked to all sorts of heavy metals. Um, cosmetics are oil-based cosmetics um, are are petroleum based, so they're very toxic. Um, so the eyeliner, the bronzers, the lipsticks, the you know, if you're not using either mineral-based, which is a big deal, mineral-based cosmetics, or um, looking at the overall toxicity levels, which I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you another QR code in just a minute, those cosmetics cause toxicity over time and here's the tough part you know women often wear you know makeup to look better and that sort of thing what if that makeup was um also actually causing you to look worse because it was causing weight loss resistance what if it was causing you to look worse because it was making your skin look bad and quite frankly men are not immune to this because of most americans um, wear antiperspirant, which is full of aluminum. It's the active ingredient. So sure, it clogs your pores. But remember, 25% of a chemical that your skin touches is absorbed into your body and has to be detoxed. And heavy metals can link or, or can bioaccumulate in your brain. They're linked to things like MS and dementia and Alzheimer's and, and you know all cancers, all this kind of stuff. So mineral-based makeups, it's a big deal for people, but if you want to look up your cosmetics, go ahead, link this QR code. Like I said, pause the video. All you do is I, for those that are not super, um, that are not super uh, used to this, you literally put your camera on and you kind of hold it over the camera, and the website um, pops up. So the the website link pops up. So that's what you want to do is. Click on that for exiting conventional, checking out your um, cosmetics. Now, another another action step for you. Um, if you haven't watched the film Dark Waters, um, I can tell you it's generally from the, the friends of mine that have, that have seen it or that have talked about it. Like, watch the movie Dark Waters. You're not gonna um, you're not gonna want to ever again use Teflon. But what is what was it about? Dark Waters was a movie about. Um, a reporter who looked into DuPont, which is, I believe, the number two chemical producer in our country, um, and turns out they falsify information, they lie, hide, steal, poison, um, poison a water that went to town and caused tons of cancer and other damage. Uh, we, you know, I just had some um, young men in the office yesterday who were just absolutely thrilled with this awesome fishing trip that they went on with their father. And uh, they went to you know Lake Erie, which is one of the Great Lakes. And you know why it's so fishing is so good in Lake Michigan and Lake Erie and all that kind of stuff. It's so good because so good because the chemical the the um, manufacturing companies have dumped so many chemicals into the Great Lakes that never disappear forever. Chemicals they're called that it's not safe to commercially fish the Great Lakes. So think about that. It's not safe to eat because those fish are getting chemicals in their body. And so there's some sort of restriction, like just only eat one fish per month um, or something like that. But um, 
Teflon, which is most prevalent in cookware, Teflon has um, these types of forever chemicals. And so while it might be cheap and it might be nonstick, it's very, very toxic to your body. And, and also, you know, for those, um, like, I, I think you guys know, I absolutely hate the this idea of wearing um, facial coverings for healthy people. You know, sick people, I get it. Um, people with a cough, sure. Um, but, you know, people are creating, first of all, a Petri dish for the growth of, um, you know, anything that sits on that face covering, but also the disposable ones are full of chemicals. So for instance, disposable face masks have chemicals in them that people breathe in that are going to potentially cause lots of long-term um, damage or long-term harm. So simplest thing to exit, exit conventional, and this is something that's very cost-effective, very easy to do. Um, switch your boiling pans to stainless steel and switch your nonstick pans to ceramic. And ceramic is not perfectly nonstick, but it is um, good enough nonstick that it, um, it's, it, it works. And, you know, with a little oil on the pan, you can certainly develop um, a good enough system for, you know, frying eggs or whatever you're, you know, cooking vegetables, things like that. But getting rid of Teflon, again, from a, I'm going to say a corruption standpoint, um, you know, Teflon was supposed to be removed from from the american you know sales market years ago and somebody somewhere some somebody paid somebody and it didn't happen you know whatever you want to say but there's no proof that teflon isn't any more toxic than when it was supposed to be removed from the market but it's still on the market here many years later um, when it was supposed to be removed so getting teflon out of your out of your kitchen is a big deal and it's an easy thing to do Additionally, microplastics. So last week, if you were in the office, we talked about um, you know what you store your food in, especially if you heat it or freeze it, um, can be very damaging. So plastic, unless it's very specific types that talk about being, you know, let's say freezer safe or cooking, you know, storage safe, they can leach chemicals into your food. A much better alternative is glass. Glass is a much, much, much better alternative. And think about from years ago, what did grandma always store all the stuff she cooked in? She, likely, if, if you grew up canning um, vegetables or, you know, having gardens and making, it was stored in glass. I mean, it's just, it's better to store things in glass. It doesn't have the leaching of chemicals. And unfortunately, not surprising, if you look at stuff like, um, testing chemicals in tap water. There are literally thousands of chemicals in tap water. It's, it's, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, just all sorts of stuff in there, but somehow even compared to countries that are not as developed, America has more microplastic contaminants that are showing up in tap water, meaning they're going through our human bodies, going out through the toilets and, even after being filtered while the the top, the you know the water that goes through the toilet might be filtered the microplastics are so small that they go back into your system for another chance american american tap water has more microplastics than india it has more microplastics than any other country in the world so getting a uh, a good filter for your water is a is a, again it's it's important so how do you, where do you want to get filters for your water? There's a, there's a few options. So for instance, the, the more expensive are, are to get um, whole house water filters so that you filter the, you know, the chlorine disinfectant byproducts and a lot of these chemicals out of your shower water and that sort of thing. So you're not breathing them in. It's been shown that a 15 minute shower, um, you, any, any of the chemicals that can become aerosols like Chlorine and chlorine disinfectant byproducts is similar to getting a about eight glasses of tap water into your body, but also in your kitchen for your drinking water, you the best thing to use is re, a reverse osmosis filter, which you could have Culligan or many other companies, um, you know, put into your home. There's also if you're buying water, you don't want to buy just the filtered water because that can be as cheap as tap water, but you want to buy spring water. It's a much better source 
Um, so those are some uh, more expensive options, but also you could get the, the uh, less expensive option is you can get the filters that attach right to your sink um, or, or even possibly go into your refrigerator, like the Brita filters, but the ones that go into your sink are a better choice. And uh, additionally, you can get um, shower head filters where it's a filter that attaches right to your shower head. So instead of paying to filter all the water in your home, it's a uh, it's a much more cost effective. You can just get a shower head filter, but that will that will purify, and you're not breathing many of those things um, into your into your body. Now, talking about a few of the main things that you need to look for as far as toxins in food, MSG or monosodium glutamate. That is something that's been um, in food for a long time. It was first he heavily utilized in the um, in the Chinese food industry. You you might remember, uh, you know, the Chin Chinese buffets. You know, for five bucks, the food didn't seem to taste that good, but it was almost like you craved it. They're also in non-organic MSGs and things heavily in like non-organic hot dogs. Um, a lot of kid foods like macaroni and cheese. And, and what does it do? Well, it actually creates an addiction. Um, it overstimulates the brain and makes people feel more addicted to food, but it's a very toxic substance. Artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners uh, are pot, you know, so drinking anything from Diet Coke to dumping Splenda in your coffee. I mean, artificial sweeteners are toxic to your brain. They're linked to cancer. Um, they're linked to diabetes. People think I'm eating a non-calorie sweetener because it protects my blood sugar or it's no calorie so it doesn't affect weight gain. Artificial sweeteners in every study I've ever seen are linked to more weight gain than if you just drank the sugar or drank the soda itself. Artificial sweeteners are linked to um, multiple sclerosis or MS. They're linked to um, all sorts of placking. They're a known neurotoxin. That means they can cross your blood brain barrier and damage your brain. Food coloring, so coloring food um, to, to look better or coloring food, for instance, in desserts for kids. I mean, again, linked to cancer, but also specifically and very strongly linked to hyperactivity. You know, how many kids are um, on Ritalin or whatever drug um, and yet their diet is never assessed? It's pretty um, disgusting, quite frankly, in my opinion, that we ignore um, as a medical profession, the fact that certain things in foods affect the way kids behave. And yet, if they're acting up in school, how quickly can some children be put on that without, you know, without being having their diet assessed or, or being discussed? I'm not saying all doctors or all parents, but it is way, way too frequent. And colorings are linked to hyperactivity because why? Those food colorings can cross into your brain. They are toxic to your body. So very important to get and here's the thing too, you can get natural alternatives. You can get red food dye that's extracted from beets or orange dye that's extracted from carrots. Why is it not as prevalent? Of course, it's more expensive because it's not just a simple chemical and it doesn't have a you know five-year shelf life. It actually expires because it's from a food, so you have to use it if you're going to use it. So you can do this if you want to do it for Easter, if you want to you know, color some, some sort of treat for the kids. There's ways to do it that are non-toxic and not near as damaging to the body. Another one is refined oils. What are refined oils? These are refined vegetable oils. This is still so common. If you look down the grocery store aisle, if you mentally go there for just a second and you um, you think about refined uh, oils, they're the ones that are in clear containers. And, and those are, not only are they damaging to the body, they're the wrong type of oils like the corn oils and the vegetable oils and the canola oils. Um, and if you, if this is news to you, you need to watch one of our old videos on nutrition or the Nutrition 101 videos that I'm releasing over the next several weeks here. But refined oils, to increase their shelf life, they're flushed or filtered through at least five chemicals to actually kill the oil, to make it um, no longer alive so that it lasts longer, to take care of the smell, to take care of the cloudiness. I mean, it's flushed through things that are similar to Windex and stuff. I mean, it's just incredible. And those are what are in most refined foods. So if you're eating breads and cookies or crackers, look at, and there's a lot of refined oils in most of those things, unless you're really looking at the labels. Lastly, 
genetically modified food. It's still genetically modified food. At this point, you know, 90 some percent of, of food that's consumed in, in America is genetically modified. There's certain countries um, still that are first world that do not allow any genetically modified food. And genetically modified food, we just, we don't know the long-term effects on the body um, because it's so new. Um, part of why we talk about eating organic or regenerative farming, or here's another great action step, and this is a perfect time of year. There's a, a farm in this area called Angelic Organics that does fruit and vegetable crop sharing. It's more cost effective, so it'll save you money, but it's from, um, you get a box of, of produce every week or every other week, depending on your family size, for as many as 24 weeks out of the year, typically starting in the beginning of June. Now, this is so important because, you know, regenerative farming versus soil depletion, even from food is not what it used to be. When, think about, you know, grandma or grandpa or, or you know, possibly you're, you're, you are a grandma or grandpa, or, uh, think about your parents, um, soil is alive and it has to have nutrients replaced. This is why cycling different types of um, food that's grown in the soil can help because different foods put in different nutrients. They pull different nutrients. But, you know, even when they used to use fertilizer that was real fertilizer, you know, from animals or whatever, um, compost, stuff like that, it put more different minerals in the soil. When you use NPK, when you, which is the, the most common, you know, um, fertilizer, it's only three minerals. So things like magnesium get severely depleted from the soil. Certain things like calcium can get depleted from the soil. And when your body, you know, you shouldn't need to get calcium from dairy. You should be able to get calcium and you do get calcium from vegetation, from plants, from, you know, that's actually how the cow gets it is they take the calcium out of the grass that they're eating. But soil is alive and the way that we farm, so getting it organic produce or like angelic organics or, or having a garden in the summer can be a big deal for your health. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but bioaccumulation, this is, if I could use a simple example, like this is where um, a minnow uh, gets, when they eat the algae, they get a little bit of toxicity from the water, from the algae. But then the amount of toxicity in their body, a bigger fish eats the minnow and they have end up having more toxicity because they get the toxicity from the minnows. A bigger fish than that eats the small fish that was eating the minnows and they tend to be even more toxic. So what do I mean by that? This is why if you're going to buy organic, you want to buy the larger meats and fish first. So wild caught fish, organic grass fed and free range meat. This The bioaccumulation effect is what, what I'm talking about or why it makes the most sense to buy those things. Additionally, when you start to talk about supplements, I hear people say pretty frequently like, oh yeah, I take a, you know, I don't like eating fish, so I take omega-3s. And I say, okay, where do you get it from? I don't know, you know, like the, just whatever one's at the grocery store. Well, from a toxicity standpoint, you have no idea what type of fish they're using. So for instance, with the Max Living products, we use all small fish for um, our omega-3s because they have lower levels of toxicity. We make sure that they, they are uh, avoided when processing of having heavy metals accidentally get added like lead, um, aluminum, mercury, the things that matter. You know, one of my, um, one of my best friends currently is doing the, uh, the research for as we add products to the Max Living lineup. And he, he was in Indianapolis um, at a company that is, is one of the biggest supplement companies in the country that still manufactures in the United States, which Max Living um, also manufactures exclusively in the United States. And when they, they interviewed, it's a, it's a company, and I, I, I'm not going to disclose the name, but if you're driving um, from Rockford to Chicago, you'll notice on the left-hand side of the road at one of the you know, big convention centers, they now are the main name on that convention center. And it was like, here's the question. How do you, you know, if we want our supplements to be tested for heavy metals, what's that going to do? And they're like, oh, yep, there's definitely going to be an increased cost for that. Well, what if we want to make sure that they're as potent as we say in the label? 
yeah, there's definitely going to be an increased cost for that. Well, what if we want to make sure, you know, they're, they're from a, an organic source, you know, it's like over and over. And so these cheap supplement companies, they, you know, they're not FDA regulated, so they can cut so many corners. And if you're consuming um, from a supplement brand that you don't really know, um, you can be getting all sorts of heavy metals. You can be paying for expensive urine or expensive stool. You can actually cause more damage to your system than you otherwise, um, than you would if you were taking nothing. And this is where I think some people actually get a little bit biased about supplements is that they, they don't actually, um, you know, know what's in them or they don't feel a difference. There was a, an energy pill where they were, they went to test its potency. It was one of those energy pills that, you know, you might notice um, it's like the ginkgo biloba and, and these things that are, it was right next to the checkout counter frequently is one of those cheap brands where for a couple bucks, you can get these energy pills and they cut them open and, and it was like 80% sawdust. I mean, it was just crap. Um, there was a resveratrol supplement that showed that it only had 2% of the potency that it claimed that it did. You know, so if I'm taking supplements, I'm taking them from a noted brand. Now, if you're going to take supplements, one of the big, the main things you should be taking for 99% of people is from a multivitamin. You need a multivitamin, a men's or women's multivitamin, a children's multivitamin. Think about your kids as they're developing. Why would a woman take prenatal vitamins to develop the baby in utero and then not give kids vitamins as they're developing as children, as they're growing from, you know, seven pounds to 170 pounds. It's like, of course you'd want all those vitamins and minerals, but yet for some reason it's purely accepted to take a multivitamin for prenatal, but many people don't take them as their, um, as a main source, as they're um, growing and developing or as they're aging. And you want vitamins that are extracted from a food source. You know, like it says on this little slide, if you can see it, vitamin A as beta carotene. That pretty much means, you know, extracted from a carrot or some source like that. And so that makes, that's a big deal because it, it, these, these supplements, if they're made in a lab, they're not digestible or not absorbable at a very high level. So um, for instance, my, the use, and you've probably heard this before if you've watched a lot of these videos, but there are at least 500 forms of vitamin A um, if you if you look at it in a carrot, there's you know one form of vitamin A in a synthetic supplement. So um, Max Living brand supplements are high quality, high potency. Um, you know there's no artificial flavors, colors, additives. These are all things that are in um, cheap supplements. So if you're buying cheap supplements, quite frankly, um, you probably just need to stop. You know if you're talking about toxicity, the spring clean, stop get it as close to its natural form. And I wanna talk about just the Max Living brand promise and then talk about um, a couple ways to detox. Cause if I went through this and you are like, holy cow, I'm definitely toxic. I gotta start, I need to do something. Um, first of all, Ma the Max Living brand, we pay for um, quite a bit of additional um, testing. So they're backed by research, high quality um, nutrition and potency. They're effective. They're, the GMP certified is one of the top labels you can get. It's called Good Manufacturing Practices, um, FDA registered, at NSF certified. Like it says, we have no artificial sweeteners, so we don't have the sucralose and you know the, the those things. They're 100% GMO and gluten free, and they they have the purity and the strength that they say they do. They get tested for all that. So why are they uh, more expensive than you know, Centrum Silver, because Centrum Silver, uh, I believe, has none of that. You know, Centrum Silver was the one that was, it just happens to be owned by a drug company, by the way, which is so laughable. So owned by AstraZeneca, and um, it turns out AstraZeneca actually helped fund the study. From, from what I read, they helped fund the study that showed that it was worse to take it than to not, because why? In my opinion, drugs make a heck of a lot more money than multivitamins, but multivitamins likely prevent a lot of the things that you would then cause you to need a drug. So that's the, the brand promise. So two levels of detoxification. Number one, here's the basic, the detox system. 
Um, if you've never detoxed before, uh, I'm just going to be a little bit bold here and say, in my opinion, you need to detox. If you've never detoxed before or it's been several years since you have, take get the detox system and take it for two to three months straight. And then um, my opinion is most people need to take one to two boxes of this a year. Now, Max Living, this has been a product we've had for, I believe it's about 15 years now. We've done so much of it for the first um, seven years I was in practice. Um, this product was $75. We've purchased so much of it that actually we've been the the manufacturing company has been able to to source better um, and more effective costs and therefore uh, sell it to us for less and we've turned around and done the same thing for you so instead of seventy five dollars it's a fifty dollar product it lasts a month like I said two to three months straight at least and then um, you know the the experts say that you can do this as much as once a quarter, but my recommendation in general is once to twice per year. So detoxing is, is something that you, it helps your liver um, get stronger. It helps pull toxins out of your body that are stored there. Um, so the detox system is a, is a big deal and um, it's very important to do so. So that's the basic, that's the one, the only, um, I'm going to quick disclaimer, you know, of course with any supplement if you're on medication there's certain times where you need to um, talk to your doctor or if you're a client of ours we're happy to talk to you about it individually in the morning the cell detox can be taken with any um, supplement or medication but the body detox is a binder it binds to chemicals and pulls them out of your body so for some people taking nighttime medication you need to um, talk to your doctor or talk to us and we can help you with when to take the binders so that it doesn't influence your medication because quite frankly, as much as medication has an effect, what is it? It's actually a toxin. The number one toxin consumed in America is medication, which is kind of ironic to think about for some people, but until you realize that the, the less medication you're on, the healthier you're going to be, um, you may, this may significantly throw you off. The very last thing for today, um, for part one here is the mountain program. The mountain program is a way to detox, heal your gut and help with everything from weight loss to, to diabetes, to um, hormone imbalances to, you know, so if you have a medical problem that you feel like needs to be addressed at a higher level, um, that's where our integrative clinic comes in. Make Schedule an appointment with Abby. We have complimentary 15 minute consults if you want to understand a program or more importantly set yourself up for a one hour consultation with her and she you can go through your concerns your wants your health um, you know uh, from a general uh, medical practitioner standpoint and we have programs like gut heal and seal to heal your gut if you've been constantly covering yourself with hand sanitizer and other chemicals we have you know, just a lot that, that really can benefit you that's next level, that's integrative and functional medicine to get you back on the right track. If you're already getting adjusted, you're working on making these changes, it's possible that the best next step for you is to check out the integrative clinic. So the keyword for today is um, health. So if for the two part for the $10 supplement credit, word number one is health. Again, word number one is health and have a very blessed day. I'll talk to you on Friday.